scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Psalm 133, behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron to his bed, to his cat. And then it says, there God hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. I have taught you that there are certain spiritual blessings that you can never receive in your secret place. It was meant to be distributed in the company of God's people. Are we together? No matter how yielded you are, there are dimensions in the spirit that you cannot touch just by your personal press. It will take the corporate presence of God's people together. It says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. The apostles understood this and after their personal exploits, they will return back to their company. Are we together? So you must be committed to a life of prayer, committed to the word and to fellowship. Acts 2.42, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. As a result, 43, it says that fear came upon every soul and that many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. So we must commit ourselves to prayer, the word, and fellowship. Number three, the third resolution that you must make this year by the Spirit is that you must be determined to make notable progress in and with your life. This is a powerful one. This came to me strong in the place of prayer. You must be determined to make notable progress in and with your life. This is the year when you must refrain from marking time and insist that there must be constructive progress in my life. If you believe that already, shout a loud amen. amen. Notable progress. In Exodus chapter 14, from verse 14, um, when Moses was leading the people from Egypt, you know, crossing the, the Red Sea, he calmed them down and then he went to the Lord and was crying. And the Lord said, why are you speaking to me? Verse 15, he went to the Lord and he says, speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. You have a mandate as a shepherd over them to insist that there is no stagnation. Even if a red sea is before you, it is not an excuse to remain. This is in God's mind. In God's mind, there should be no reason whatsoever for the absence of progress not pharaoh behind you not the red sea before you he didn't say go and explain to them he said the red sea is not the issue tell the people have it as a mentality that you must go forward regardless what is in front of you you must make up your mind nigeria cannot be the reason election cannot be the reason no, the economy of nations cannot be the reason. The onslaught of darkness cannot be the reason. Did the Bible not say, he that cometh from above is above all? Listen, if you do not have a victor's mentality, already you are defeated from January. You must make up your mind. How will a man go to tell God 
very accountable leader he stands before god and says there is a red sea what should i tell them and god does not say tell them to examine the red sea he says tell them that they go forward prophesy to yourself say go forward one more time say it again go forward let the realm of the spirit hear you prophesy go forward he didn't say go around going around is not going forward no in fact going around is proof of madness when you see people they call mad people wanderers when your steps have to be constructive and ever increasing to be called forward just because there is motion does not mean it is advancement I didn't say move around go forward go forward means the next step must be ahead of the last one that means you should not move forward in April then by no go forward prophesy again say go forward you must be determined to go forward that means if this prophecy is true for you your least month should be January it should never be that by the time you are in February March April you turn back and begin to wish for January for my Bible says the path of the just is that in your Bible that it is as a shining light that shineth more and more say more and more to your destiny say more and more So please sit. Number one, love Jesus like never before. Number two, be committed to prayer, to the word and fellowship, corporate fellowship. Number three, be determined to make notable progress in and with your life. There are many of you here who are ordained to be global. God has placed an anointing upon you in every area, but you have allowed mediocrity to sit upon your destiny, giving flimsy excuses. This is the year that God is once again opening a door for you. Yeah. Number four, the last encouragement and we get to the word. Are you ready? The fourth charge that I'm giving you tonight in this first service as a ministry is that you must make up your mind that this year your life will be a blessing. Make up your mind. Never assume that you are a blessing. It is those you bless that will tell you if you are a blessing or not. You cannot assume that you are a blessing. There is no being a blessing without a witness. No. It is impossible to say you are a blessing without pointing who and what you blessed. When God blessed man, the first example of blessing, there was the blesser God and was the object of the blessing. And there was proof of the blessing. So it's impossible to say you are a blessing and yet not have people testify that indeed you are a blessing. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. I like that word. In thee, he says, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This should not be the year where you sit down and wait in self-sympathy for people to keep blessing you. It is time for someone to thank God you are alive. There are many of you, nobody prays for you except they are asked to intercede corporately. Your life has not made any impact that deserves someone waking up to say, Lord, keep him for our sake. You must change that narrative today. Hallelujah. Pray for me, pray for me. It's a mediocre approach to life. You must be so valuable and so much of a blessing that someone will gladly leave sleep alone and rise up and intercede for you and say, Lord, for my sake, this is the reason why I eat bread in the morning. This person is such a blessing to me. This is the reason why my children go to school. Keep him alive for my sake. There was a woman who died in the Bible. And the people refused they said no way they came and showed the apostle look what she has done testaments of her usefulness you must make up your mind to be a blessing 
Waiting for a preacher to be a blessing is failure already. Waiting to be rich in quotes to be a blessing is failure already because most people believe that the only thing you give men is money. That is a big mistake. I have taught you about inheritance. If you don't have money, transfer your mindset. That is a potent gift, greater than money. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many, how many? Many, to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. He called an idol worshiper called Abram from Ur of the Chaldeans. And then in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 down to 3, he said, come out of your country, your kindred, your father's house unto a land that I will show you. And if you walk in keeping with my dictates, here are blessings that I'm keeping for you, that I will make you a great nation. Now he's speaking to a man without a child. I hope you understand that. I will bless thee. Please keep that scripture. I will make your name great. We have a teaching on this already, but let me just give you a little teaser. If you, you may want to refer to my message, Redefining Inheritance. I teach there on five things that the Bible calls inheritance. One of it is a good name. The Bible says a good name is to be desired more than money. You are great, but if your name is not great, there is no succession. The possibility of succession is that you invest your goodness in your name so that when you are not there, people can still use your name. That's why Jesus gave us his name, not just his life. We have his life, but he still gave us his name. There are many people who are great, but their names are not great. This is an encouragement probably to a parent already. Don't die with greatness. Leave a great name. Names don't die. I told you at the end of your life, your name can be a padlock or a key. It can lock people's destinies or it can be the reason why destinies are open. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and ways that our hearts so I don't know anybody who names his child Jezebel. We don't even care what the meaning is. There are a few people maybe who named their children Judas. I don't know anybody who has named his child Lucifer. Those are names. Very beautiful sounding names. But they were associated with all kinds of wickedness. When you name your child Lucifer, that child's life can be ruined. To names are so powerful that when people had an encounter with God, he himself changed their names. On account of names, an angel shut the mouth of a prophet till he agreed with God. Names are powerful. Are we together? Your name is a capture of your reputation, your credibility. That when people say the name of Jesus, something happens in the realm of the spirit because all authority were invested in that name. Is someone learning? So make up your mind this year that you will be a blessing. That someone who was not going to get a job after all, just because he per adventure mentions your name. They say, what did he say? This pastor, you know him, you're related to him, I wouldn't have given you the job. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? What would Mephibosheth be doing at the table but for Jonathan's sake? In the name of Jesus, may your name open doors for people. I say it to you prophetically. This is the year that God is investing grace even upon your name. 
as a parent, as a leader, your name also means the name of your organization. Your name also means the name of your business. Everything that has wrapped shame and reproach around your name, to not allow dignity and honor to follow the speakings of your name, let it be rolled like a curtain in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Let's just pray in one minute over these admonishments, obtain grace from God, and then we get to the word. Go ahead and pray someone. Father, I obtain grace to love Jesus like never before. This is your first word of encouragement to us as a global family. Please pray, I obtain grace. I obtain grace to be committed to a life of prayer, a life of the word, and a life of corporate fellowship corporate fellowship someone is praying I make a determination to make notable progress in and with my life in and with my life someone is praying in and with my life and I make a commitment that this year 2023 my life will be a blessing a blessing to nations that people will glorify God in me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you been blessed already? This means there has to be a lot of maturity and definiteness to your pursuit of the word. Please look up. A believer, among the many things that 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 measure the maturity of the believer is stability and consistency as far as the pursuit of the word is concerned. At this point of your experience, if you are really serious with God, there should be no fantasizing and cajoling you to be serious with God. You shouldn't be cajoled to come to the house of God. You shouldn't be cajoled to be serious about the things of God. There must be a level of maturity where you wean yourself away from certain things. He says that when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. But now that I am a man, he says, I lay aside these childish things. We must attain and press onto maturity. For the Bible says, Galatians chapter 4, it says, An heir, for as long as he is a child, it says that he differed nothing from a servant, even though he be Lord of all. Hallelujah. Your coming to the house of God should not be something you are reminded about again. It should, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And for people who come to the house of the Lord and they are very casual, careless, just sitting around, looking around and not paying attention. Remember the man at Gate Beautiful? When the apostle said, look on us, the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive. You can look expecting to receive. It says they look unto him and their faces were lightened. When you look unto him, for sure you will receive. Hallelujah. So welcome as for me I have made up my mind afresh again that in the name of Jesus everyone that God has trusted to me by reason of leadership and this ministry will continue to rise and grow until the least among us becomes as great as David and that only happens by the word God is not a herbalist he's not a magician there there are, there is no other way for attaining unto maturity in the spirit outside of the ministry of the word the ministry of prayer the ministry of fellowship the ministry of the spirit anything outside of these will only lead you to superstition and deception these are patterns if you want to see the glory of the Lord revealed in your life these are the things you must do Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 this is what the Lord commanded Moses he said that the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you the glory appears unto the doer not the one who is watching this is the thing that the Lord commands that you do. 
Are we blessed? Now pay attention. The word for this year now, the first service, every first koinonia service is dedicated to expanding the prophetic word. Every year God gives us words to guide us according to times and seasons. God is a God of times and seasons and we know that he does, he's doing something every time. And for us as a ministry, he's decided to capture his dealings with us as a global family in prophetic words. I know that prophetic words have largely been abused sadly across the body of Christ. Sometimes people just bring it just as a ritual that doesn't really carry any power. But let me tell you that for us as a ministry, every prophetic word comes from a place of deep prayer and intercession. And if and when believed and engaged produces wonder working results. Are we together? Amen. So let's look at tonight's teaching. Ephata, the ministry, the mystery of open doors. Ephata. Ephata is spelled E P H P H A T H A. E P H P H A T H A. Ephata, the mystery of open doors. Matthew chapter 7, please. From verse 7 and 8, Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Let's read the last, um, the last sentence together. Ready? Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8, still reading together. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Say amen. amen. Next scripture, please. Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. We're examining the mystery of open doors. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth. And shut it and no man open it. Verse 8. It says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and not denied my name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the Lord gave us a prophetic word this year. And he said to us, it is the year of open doors. And um, every word from God demands that it must be believed, demands that it must be received, and demands that it must be engaged for any potent result to come out. Let me repeat myself again. Every word that comes from the Lord to the believer demands that number one, it must be believed. Number two, it must be received. Number three, it must be engaged. It must be believed. Luke 1 45. Blessed is she that believe. For unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. It must be received. Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, Mark eleven twenty four. believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have it. Mark eleven twenty four. And then it must be engaged with faith. The Bible says, now there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said they heard the word just like we did. You find that in Hebrews 4, I believe, that the word did not profit them, not mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hallelujah. So it is important for us to know that though every prophetic word must be believed, must be received, and must be engaged in order to profit the believer. What are doors? Let's discuss the subject of doors. What are doors? It's important for us to understand what God has said and what God is saying. Two definitions very quickly. Number one, 
a door is a an authorized system for access a door is an authorized system for access when we talk about doors we're not just talking about wooden objects or metallic objects that are attached to walls like we have in architecture although we call that doors but classically speaking when we speak about doors we are talking about authorized systems for access access to opportunities access to levels and dimensions access to movement hallelujah are we clear on that now so doors are authorized systems for access when you talk about doors you are talking about access authorized systems for access i wrote something down here still adding to the first definition doors control motion and movement doors control motion and movement for instance if a door were closed before you it sustains the power and the ability to restrict your movement and to restrict your motion so first definition a door is an authorized system for access the second definition doors can also mean hindrances limitations and restrictions doors can also mean hindrances limitations and restrictions so two definitions that a door is an authorized system for access but a door can also mean hindrances limitations and restrictions hallelujah a few information about doors you may want to know the first here is that doors can open and doors can close very simple but powerful information doors can open and doors can close depending on what is engaged a door can be open and a door can close a door that was once open can be closed and a door that was once closed can be open there are many instances in scripture where doors were opened and doors were closed classically speaking in the bible you when you read in genesis 7 genesis 8 the flood in the days of noah the bible tells us that when it was time for the rain to come god himself closed that door is that true and there was rain up until we get to chapter 8 thereabout and then the door was open again so doors can open and doors can close the second thing i want you to learn about doors is that doors can be circumstances and doors can be human entities and doors can be spirits doors can be circumstances doors can be human entities doors can be spirits is someone learning doors can be circumstances and situations you may want to add doors can be human entities and doors can be spirits for instance i think it was john chapter 10 and verse 7 jesus himself said i am the door he didn't say he has access to the door jesus called himself the door john 10 7 help us media then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep jesus calls himself the door hallelujah now the third information i want you to learn very quickly about doors is that all doors are closed by default hmm. all doors are closed by default listen carefully all doors it does not matter what treasure is in them all doors are closed by default hmm. whether as humans whether as products all doors are closed by default let's talk about closed doors closed doors Luke chapter 11, please. We'll read the first seven verses. 
I like the way Jesus guides and builds his disciples because he's able to draw stories from the circumstances around them to communicate um, lessons and to grant them spiritual intelligence. He's teaching on prayer now, but then I want us to read from verse 1, but the context begins from verse 5. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Pay attention now, verse 2. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Verse 3. It says, Give us this day, or give us day by day our daily bread for... Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now the context starts. And he said unto them, please look up. Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? Follow the story now. And say unto him, friend, lend me three loves. Verse 6. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Verse 7, and he said, he from within shall answer and say, listen carefully, trouble me not. Why? The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you. Look at this powerful story. What you are looking for is available. But the distance between you and what you are looking for is a closed door. It says, do not trouble me. I know you have need, shame and reproach is imminent. And it's not like what you are looking for is out of reach. But the only trouble is that the door is now shut. You came at a point where the door was shut. I told you that doors can be closed. Let's look at a few things about closed doors. Let me add one more scripture. Matthew 25 from verse 8 to 10. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 8 to 10. Remember the story of the 10 virgins, five being wise, the other five being foolish. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lambs are gone out. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. He says, But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Verse 10. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. When they returned back, even though with oil, Having oil in your hand and a door shut still kept them outside. You would think that the presence of the oil should naturally remedy for a closed door. Please pay attention. Let's talk about closed doors a bit. Write a few things that I wrote down here. I hope God is speaking to someone. Number one, doors are closed to manage or restrict access until permission is granted that means not all closed doors are bad this is what i'm trying to explain don't just frown at closed doors like you will be learning not all closed doors are bad for instance generally speaking now doors are closed to manage or restrict access until permission is granted we have a lot of working people here a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and people in government, and generally, doors are closed so that access can be managed and restricted until permission is granted. You don't enter an office or a house or a door and just walk in. Even in heaven where there is no evil, there are doors because doors manage and restrict access. Are we together? These are the positive side to close doors. Does manage or restrict access because if access is not managed like my dearly beloved mentor would say abuse will always be inevitable so there has to be a system of restriction to access and doors provide that opportunity number two closed or sealed doors increase the value of a product closed or sealed doors 
increase the value of a product is that true imagine with me please look up that you went to buy a product maybe perfume or whatever it is and you find it already open or a beverage and you find it open even if it was open for you you are not going to buy it and you will not place value the value that you place on that product is because you meet it closed and sealed is that true yeah in fact there are products that you will see disclaimers written there that if at, at the point of purchase you find this product open it says to discard or return back is that true so closed doors are not all negative they increase the value of a product in second kings chapter 4 reading from verse 3 and 4 this was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet when she went to meet elisha he gave her a recommendation verse 3 then he said go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors even empty vessels he said borrow not a few verse 4 and when thou art come in he says thou shalt shut the door upon you and upon your sons you want to increase value and he says you will only do that by shutting the door hallelujah there is no increase in value when doors are unnecessarily open you have to shut the door it was a recommendation that the prophet was given that means let the people not see you while you are preparing they will not place value on the product shut the door while you are pouring the oil what they should see is the finished work even in building when when architectural companies come to build they fence that building first before they start building because if you leave the door open you reveal the security architecture of that building is that true so they put a fence around it because there will be a lift maybe an underground house not all short short or closed doors are dangerous there are many times that doors are short to increase and maintain value is someone learning Hmm. So close or seal doors increase the value of a product. Number three, the third thing you need to learn about closed doors is that generally doors, especially when closed, protect and preserve. Doors, closed doors can protect and preserve. You find that in Genesis chapter 7 from verse 13 to 16. The ark of Noah, Genesis 7, doors protect and preserve. He said, in the selfsame day, entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. Reading to 16, he says, they and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind and every bird of every sort 15 it says and they went in unto noah in the ark two by two of all flesh wherein is the breath of life verse 16 let's read it together ready one to read and they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as God has commanded him and the Lord shut him in it was God himself that closed that door because a flood was about to come and only the person who had a closed door would be preserved the the heavens gave their rain the earth gave his rain only Noah in the ark that God himself closed that door preserve them so closed doors can protect and preserve are we learning number four now this is the side of closed doors that we are here to deal with now closed doors can be a deliberate hindrance to put a deliberate hindrance put up to hinder progress closed doors having given you the positive side to closed doors closed doors can be deliberate hindrances i wrote here put up to hinder progress an example prison doors prison doors are closed doors that are able to restrict 
progress. This is the kind of closed door that this prophetic word was designed to deal with. Closed doors can be deliberate hindrances put up to hinder progress. An example are the prison doors. Are we learning now? So that when you are rebuking closed doors, you know which closed door you are rebuking. Lest you rebuke what was supposed to preserve you, add value to you. You see that we, we are a people of spiritual intelligence. You don't just shout when you are saying every closed door. You mean every closed door that has been put as a system of restriction. Are we together now? Because closed doors can manage or restrict access. They can increase the value of a product. They can protect and they can preserve. But then they can be a deliberate hindrance put up to hinder progress. Now, let's look at how to open closed doors. Shaleka branda gatosiata. Light is coming to someone now. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Do you know, revelation is so powerful. It can bail you out of ignorance in a moment and set you on course for a life of victory. While I was preparing this note, I had to just stop, rest my head and shout and say, God, 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 this God. Number one. How to open closed doors. Are you ready? The first key or the first um, mystery that is given to us from scripture as far as opening closed doors is concerned is the use of the right keys. The first way we open closed doors is by using the right key or the right keys. Closed doors are opened by using the right keys. Please underline right keys. A wrong key does not open a closed door, even though it is a key. Hallelujah. There are many of us who every house, I presume, has multiple doors. And sometimes every one of those doors would have a unique key. Is that true? The key that may open the main door may not open the kitchen door. So you can have a key, a correct key, meant for another door. If it is the kitchen that you want to open, you must use the key that is meant for the kitchen. I think there has been a mix-up of this, especially in the body of Christ. And you've heard me say it again and again. There is a mix of different keys, believing that because they are divine keys, they will open every door. An example, using prayer and fasting alone as the ultimate key to prosperity and the manifestation of prosperity. It doesn't work that way. No. Prayer and fasting in addition to other things is what will guarantee the manifestation of the blessing of the Lord upon an individual. Prayer and fasting on its own does not take ignorance. Or an example is Bible study without the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it will only end you to become a religious person with nothing potent to produce result. Or submitting to the ministry of the word and ignoring the ministry of prayer and fasting. No. Jesus himself, I've clarified this many times in this house. He calls himself the word and yet his life was invested in prayer. Even as he's seated at the throne of heaven now, he's not quoting scriptures, he's making intercession. That is the value he has for prayer, even though being the word. Are we together? So the first way we open closed doors in this kingdom is the use of the right keys. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7, please. Revelations 3, 7, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, we read that earlier, but let's just read again for emphasis. This thing saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. There's a separate teaching coming on that, so I'm not going to talk so much about that. 
The Bible says by that key he can open and no man can shut and he can shut and no man can open. It takes more than desire for doors to be open. It takes the right key. Someone say the right key. Luke eleven fifty two. Luke chapter 11 please and verse 52. Woe unto you lawyers. Jesus is speaking. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. So keys there refer to a body of truth, a body of knowledge. It says, ye entered not in yourself through that knowledge, and them that were entering you have hindered. So he was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees, the doctors of the law at that time, and he was telling them, listen, you have, you have taken away the key of knowledge, access to knowledge. That means that knowledge is supposed to usher you into realms to open doors for you. You didn't enter yourself and you have restricted those who desire to enter. The right key. In the name of Jesus, my prayer for someone this year is that God will grant you grace to find the right key. Please shout a believing amen. That God will grant you grace to find the right key. Many of you have been holding keys, but could it be that the key you have been holding is not for the door you are looking for? And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. In most large houses, they put all their keys together or at least maybe one, one each of the keys and they put it together in a bunch and keep it somewhere safe. Is that true? Yes. So that you can have it within your reach. If it's the main door you are opening, you have it there. If it's the kitchen door, the bathroom door, you have it there. For most of us, you have been given these keys, but because of carelessness, you scattered your keys like the bones in Ezekiel's valley, and you cannot construct it together to become something exceedingly great. This is the year God is granting you grace to gather them together. Hallelujah. The first way we open closed doors is through the use of the right keys this talks of knowledge this talks of understanding this talks of faith you need knowledge and you need understanding it is my prayer and my determination this year to bring light like never before truth upon truth line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little to the end that god will grant us grace that with light we will be able to rise. The Bible says that we are able to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his light. Hallelujah. Number two, how do we open closed doors? Are you ready? The second way according to scripture that closed doors are opened is by knocking. By knocking. Knocking here means obtaining help from men through mercy and favor don't forget this the second way that closed doors are open is by knocking every time you knock a door it is because you do not have the power to open it yourself if you have a key you do not need anybody helping you are we together now once you have a key you do not need anybody helping you the key itself will open in fact sometimes you don't even need to speak the moment there is a key the door opens but the moment you do not have a key and you need that door open, another system that God put is to knock. Because the one who opens has access to the door. But now you need entrance, but you do not have the key. Is someone learning now? Knocking. Knocking talks about obtaining help from men through the ministry of mercy and favor we already looked at matthew 7 from verse 7 to 8 the bible says knock and it shall be open to you you are not the one who will open it it shall be open to you there are doors that need to be opened but not by you directly they must be open for you the most important thing is that they are open so that you will enter at such points playing around with a key around a door that you don't have authority over will only waste your time what you need to do is to knock the bible says in verse 8 for everyone that knocketh it shall be opened hallelujah this is where the ministry of mercy and favor comes 
there are doors you need open by all means but you may not have the spiritual capacity you don't have the key but there are people that have the key what you need to do is to master the art of knocking those who can knock will have many doors open that is not credited to their personal efforts there are people behind at the other side of that door they have access to it all you need to do is to learn how to knock is someone learning second corinthians 2 and verse 12 second corinthians 2 and verse 12 furthermore he said paul was speaking now giving them a story i just picked a verse that i found interesting there it says when i came to throw us to preach christ's gospel it says and a door was opened unto me of the lord who opened the door for him the lord the door was open but he never mentions using a key to open that door. He says it was open unto me. In fact, one last scripture, Revelations 3 and verse 20. Very popular scripture, Revelations 3, 20. Behold, I stand. Who is speaking here? Jesus, standing at the door of your heart and knock because even though he's the creator of the ends of the earth when he created man he made you a free moral agent that even though he is god it becomes scripturally incorrect for him to budge into your life and he's patient enough if god knocks you must learn how to knock there are certain doors that you will need to hide your pride and knock this year there are doors of grace doors of power because it is only those who knock that will have that door open is someone learning not every door every door may respond to keys but you may not have the privilege of access to every key yet you need every door that should be open open so you must know how to knock to knock requires patience to knock requires persistence is someone learning now let's go to Luke 11 and finish up the scripture that we started now God is giving someone wisdom already. Matthew chapter, I mean Luke chapter 11 from verse 7. Now, remember our story? Where the guy began to knock and say, please help me with three loaves of bread. I want to give my friend. And the man said, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed are you seeing that that door was positively closed for the man and his children but with respect to the one who needs help that door needs to be opened he said i cannot rise and give thee what did the man do i say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity the word importunity is the word persistence he said he will rise and give him as many he asked for three but he said you can even get more by knocking your intention was to get three loaf but knocking is so powerful it can give you more knocking does not only give you a job it can create a destiny for you Is someone learning knock to everyone that knocks Matthew 7 7 and 8 when you read amplified it says ask and keep asking seek and keep seeking it says knock and keep knocking and the door will be open unto you is someone learning knocking talks of obtaining help from men listen as far as the opening of doors are concerned you will need the ministry of mercy and the ministry of favor the ministry of mercy and the ministry of favor there are many doors you will encounter in your life and your destiny that you may not have the key yet that door needs to be opened you will have to knock if i come to your office for instance I will have to knock at the door and then you come and open is that true when you open it is your opening that gives me access that means I must pray for something to happen to your heart for that door to be opened the friend here said I know you are my friend but I'm sorry right now I'm in bed with my children my apologies go away and the man kept 
may God put it in the heart of someone this year to rise up and see to it that every closed door is open over your life in the name of Jesus Christ you heard some of the testimonies here let me tell you I have taught you and I will keep teaching you till it enters your spirit that all blessings come from God through men to men to men believe me men can be used by God to open doors doors very strange doors of opportunity may that be your testimony are you ready for number three how do we open closed doors the third is by supernatural power the third way doors are open is by the ministry of warfare and power the supernatural power of God because there are doors especially demonic doors that will not open except and unless force is engaged Acts chapter 6 from verse 25 Acts chapter 6 and verse 25. Give it to us, please. Acts 6 25. Acts 16, my apologies, 16 25. Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang unto God, and the prisoners heard them. There were many prisoners in that prison. Some were interested in going out. Others were interested in remaining there. Paul and Silas said, no way, we will not remain here. Verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake in a prison. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. A key cannot do this one. There are, a key can quietly open the door. But when it is supernatural power, both the door, the foundation of the house must know that it is God coming. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to someone. It is not only keys that will open some doors. The great power of God is about to swing open ancient doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give us that scripture. So that the foundations of the prison were take were shaken when it is the power of god the doors do not open one by one he said and all doors were open no key but power don't you think keys are the only ways doors are open when the power of god comes it may not be the time of the stirring of the water but you will still say stand up you don't need to wait once per year there is a supernatural dimension to opening doors there are times when keys fail there are times when the hearts of men fail at that time resort to the one who can send an earthquake from heaven to the earth it's not only a door that he opens the Bible says the foundations of the prison and immediately when it is God it does not take time immediately immediately not later not next week not next month immediately hold on please please ladies and gentlemen think about this I watch this sometimes in my own boring way my apologies I just you know sometimes I'm watching videos I like to watch videos of demolitions of houses large structures and then sometimes these these you know the 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 machines that squeeze metals and just break them and I I have never been I get so amazed that a car will be put in that machine and in less than one minute it will squeeze it like a rack I have seen many of you here construction engineers and you know that it can take three years, five years, ten years, thirty years to build a skyscraper. And in a moment, using explosives, you watch it come down. Everybody watch 9-11. In a moment, it came down. When it is God, he has no time to come key by key. The entire foundation must go down. 
My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. We have seen what happens when doors are open. A key can only open one door at a time. Listen, if there are 10 doors, you will have to go and open one. There are doors that you have to turn them three times. And superior security doors like we have today, they use iris, fingerprints, all kinds of things. It will take a while. Many of you here are into security and logistics. You don't, if, if, you, are, if you, are, you go to the bulk room of a bank, for instance, you're not going to turn a key two times for it to be open. No. For some of you, your loved ones found the key, but the time it would take for that key to work, they died trying to open that door. It was a right key, but all the things to engage with respect to time. Notice the character of the power of God. They prayed and they sang. God never called the jailer. God never asked the strength of the foundation. Who designed it? That is none of his business. They prayed and they sang. And God said, clear the way. In, listen, listen. In Acts chapter 12, you see, when Peter was bound hand and feet, it was an angel that was sent. There was no earthquake. Prayers was made without ceasing and an angel came. He opened the doors and they went out. But when God came, Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against the King? No one can. And no one will. Hear me. Let me speak to someone. This year, your family is about to experience something who have been bound I'm speaking prophetically age long captivities that have tied people down in the name of Jesus the mighty warrior the terrible one will arise as a warrior that he is and the foundations of many families will be rattled everything that has not been planted by God must give way is God it must insist that all doors open all doors this is not a year to celebrate some doors and leave others all doors all doors mention some of the doors that must open thank God for the ones that opened last year all doors all doors someone is prophesying for one minute all doors all doors all doors by the spirit of the living God hallelujah hallelujah a, a scripture just came to my spirit I believe that should be Judges 16 and verse 3 Samson although it was not a very nice story unfortunately but the Bible says Samson removed the door of the gate look for it for us yes at me, he says he laid at midnight the Philistines were gathering round he said I will not only you want to fight me I will show you the one who has strengthened me I will not only open the, I will remove the door the Bible says he removed the doors of the gate of the city and climbed a hill and kept it and sat there now you are ready to pray Psalm 24 verse 7 Psalm 24 verse 7 lift up your heads 
not give me a key this situation is not just about a key not where is my destiny helper lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors that the king of glory hear me hear me please look up let me tell you what this means there are doors that you try to enter and you try to use a key ordinarily it should open but because there is a spirit behind it even when you are using a key it does not open there are times that you knock and men should help you and because there is a spirit their hearts are hardened like pharaoh and they will not open the door to the job the door to that opportunity do you know what god does he says move let me be the one to enter because you see question when god comes as a savior he knocks but when he comes as a warrior he breaks understand this there is jesus the savior who will knock at the door of your heart gently but when he stands before obstacles i sense the power of god so strong in this place now lift up your heads ancient gates ancient gates ancient doors lift up your heads ancient doors the king of glory the king of glory the king of glory hallelujah listen we're about to pray pay attention now please look up so i have taught you that there are three biblical ways to open closed doors never forget this for the rest of your life number one is by the application of kingdom principles keys many doors will already be opened by the application of keys there are times that you may not need keys, but you need people who are the uh, other side of the door. The ministry of men, the ministry of mercy and favor. But let me tell you the truth. Most of the doors that represent defining moments in the lives of men are not an issue of key or men. They are issues of spirits. Spirits. Nobody has ever risen from this family like that. Let, let, let us be the protectors of this covenant. That anybody that must rise from this family must serve this idol. And if you now come and say you will serve the living God. That ah, in the name of Jesus. May the mighty warrior arise. Arise, arise in power. Arise, arise in grace. Arise, arise in glory. hallelujah now please show me the design of the prophetic word can you display the design the cover design you will tell me of these three which one has opened the door that you are about to see then i will share with you the vision that led to this prophetic word and we'll pray can you find the design just the cover design for this if you can find it put it for us please I was praying and preparing as I would always do to receive a prophetic word. Please pay attention now. And I was caught up in the spirit and I had a vision. And in this vision, I had like a, you know, a door, giant door. And then I saw these ancient keys. Um, one time, in London, I was given, a few people gave me a key, a key just to represent the mysteries of the kingdom. So they gave me as a gift. You know, these Europeans value a lot of these things. We don't value them in Nigeria. Once it doesn't bring money directly, we don't care. <laughs> but they gave me this bunch of very old keys. I think they used maybe for castles or something. So they made it and gave me as a memorial to just know that, you know, custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom. So I have it somewhere. I just, I just keep it there. And... Um, and so I saw a key like that, and it opened the door. Then the second time, I did not see a key again. All I had was, boom. 
boom like the door was hit and i just saw light then i saw the word open doors that's how i knew that god was speaking to us this year that it will be the year of open doors let me tell you if you have if you have never seen a prophetic word come to pass let this be the year you see it come to pass in your life. hallelujah when i called our people to design for the prophetic word i insisted that certain things be captured in that design to reflect the vision that i saw the key word for these open doors is all doors open not just open doors all doors all doors all doors what does this mean let me tie this up now so that we'll pray listen carefully now you may sit for a moment so that when you rise next we rise to pray when you stand in front of a closed door i said when you stand in front of a closed door the first thing you need is discernment when you stand in front of a closed door the first thing you need is not action the first thing you need is discernment is this door closed for preservation closed to add value or is this a demonic door that is an impedance a hindrance to my progress it will guide you to be able to know what tool to use if the door was locked with keys then what you need will be keys to open it if there are men at the other side of the door then you will need to master the art of knocking but if there are spirit entities and covenants that have stood at the back of that door you see if you open a door with a key it can be closed again but when a door is broken your children and your children's children can pass there are many people listen if in a family of 20 or 30 people one person maneuvers his way and forces that door to open and it closes behind him you did not do much he said as for me and my house the blessing will always be for you and your house hallelujah as for me and my house please help those under the anointing it's for me and my house he says i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders in israel it is not just one person i and everybody when i was praying in the my pre preparing receiving this prophetic word for my own life i prayed for every one of you in the spirit you see can you see two doors open and you can see the holy spirit as a sign of the supernatural power of god are you seeing that it was so open that it's not only one person that passed i'm not an artist but i i know when you see some things you force it to be reflected there it is not only one person question when that demonic door called the red sea opened how many people passed talk to me please how many people passed there was not one covenant person who was left the way the red sea opened should tell you it was a door not a river rivers move but this one opened heater and teeter on dry ground the red sea was a mystery in the spirit that was why pharaoh had confidence that these guys cannot pass remember the nile is egypt is a place of wizardry they had covenants with serpents they had covenants with the elements of creation moses knew that no kind of architecture will move the water to where now it was a red sea for a reason but god said no that means there are many things you will see that look like doors but if god helps you to look you will find out they are not really doors they are just spirits masquerading as doors open it heater and teeter when god opens a door it is enough for everybody everybody in the prison was not praying 
everybody in the prison was not singing but when God came even those who provided they were in the vicinity that means there are some of your family members they may not even be born again but when my God I don't know about your own God but when my God arises and shows up this year there are doors that will open that your children's children will eat from as many as are far off in the name of Jesus Christ all doors including the one that is not your business provided it came under the covering of your prayer all doors all doors what is your business with your neighbors rising all doors all doors all doors financial doors There are people who have struggled in ministry. I'm saying this prophetically. You have done everything with the integrity of heart and it looks like those doors are not opening. Help them. I decree and declare by the mantle that came with this prophetic word. In the name of Jesus, strange doors will begin to open for you. Hear me. There are businesses that lost money last year, lost opportunity last year. You are saying, God, I do not even know how to start. You don't need one or two doors. The situation you are in now, even if two doors open, it may not be enough. In the name of Jesus, let the all door anointing, the all door anointing, the all door anointing, let it rest upon you. Please do not be careless with prophetic words this year not everybody is joking and playing games there are words that come from the bowel of prayer and contact with the spirit all doors all doors using all your money to treat your health because the devil wants to kill you don't keep quiet and die as if you are not a believer this door of health you must open up this year Hear me, this is the year you should not listen to all that nonsense and say it has always been like that. There is power to change it. It has always been like that, that if you do not have a key, prison doors don't open, except that when God comes, he rewrites rules again. Hallelujah. All doors. All doors. This is what God has said and we believe. Now watch this. It means therefore that in this year 2023, God is going to be principally dealing with us across three areas. One, access to the keys of the kingdom. He's going to be teaching us to know how to access the keys of the kingdom. According to Matthew 13 and verse 11. It says it has been given unto you to know the kingdom the mysteries of heaven Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16 to 19 Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus and he cried unto God that he said I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him reading to 19 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened it says that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints verse 19 it says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe to us word who believe to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power so all through this year every koinonia service will be a feast of light revelation and mysteries coming to empower you by the spirit number two favor this year god is going to be granting us access to understand the mysteries of favor seeing then that knocking will require a man at the other side of the door to open it revelations 3 9 please revelations 3 9 you need to understand the mysteries that control favor never let anybody downplay the place of favor 3 9 revelations behold it says um okay give us verse 8 my apologies 3 8 
3 8. I know thy works. He said, Behold, I have set before thee. So there are times that an open door can be set before you. Your assignment is to walk into it because you have received help. He said, Having obtained help from the Lord, I continue unto this day. I have set before you an open door. No man, because it was not a man that opened it, a man cannot shut it. I have set before you. There are times that the door is closed, he gives you keys to open. But there are times he can set before you an open door by the help of God. Hallelujah. And then of course, number three, this year God is going to be teaching our hands to war. Seeing then that there is a dimension of warfare and power. Give us Psalm 144 and verse 1. That God is able to teach our hands to war and even our fingers to fight. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, he says, that you war a good warfare with the prophecy. There are words that are coming. You must gain mastery on how to war a good warfare in the spirit. Because there are doors that will never open except by engaging the power of God. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Can I tell you the truth? There are certain things about your business, your life, your home, your children. It is going to take the ministry of warfare and power. Hallelujah. I prayed for a young man one time, very, you know, like a, I think a teenager or so. And this gentleman said, whenever it's time for exams, very young boy, intelligent, even talking with him, you will know that this is a bright boy. But you see the result of that boy is not something that glorifies God at all. The failure is too bad. And the boy said every time he sits down, um, he just goes blank during exams. And until he writes nonsense or nothing at all, he will leave that place and start remembering everything. That child does not need counseling. What that child needs is power. Are we together? For many of us, hear me, there are many doors, even spiritual doors, doors of hearing, doors of seeing that have been closed over your life. Channels of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father, open up. No boundaries, no limits, open up. My hearing open up you are a door see listen hear me you can be standing close to the helper of your destiny and yet not know that between you and him is a door and be wondering why you are so close and yet nothing reaches you don't forget Luke 11 I am close to you just a door difference but it's already late the door is shut I cannot give you there are many of you who have been so close to people that in a moment can change your life. Sincerely speaking, they discuss the rising of others in your presence and say, um, I, will remember, I will do something about your issue. And yet you see God using them to lift others and you are there. Just because you are looking at a man does not mean there is no door. Doors can be invisible. Invisible does not mean unreal. Invisible just means beyond the scope of your optical eyes. In fact, most doors are invisible. Hallelujah. 
Most doors are invisible. Haraso sietariata. Ali shalika sobrande gasatia. Shalado savretes kebele kusha branda gatiata. Grande gaso de belego siata. Krata bagasiata. I'm just seeing what looks like a coffin and I'm seeing like a dead corpse coming back to life. This is what I'm seeing. There is an anointing that is bringing resurrection to many families. That many things that have been buried down. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Everything that has died that should come back to life. Your joy, your peace, your prosperity. I command that it jacks back to life now. I command that it jacks back to life now. Hear me? Please listen to me. Help that lady, please. I want you to listen. We are, we are going to pray some serious prayer now. That's why I didn't take so much time to teach. Every city you see has doors. Just because you are in the city does not mean you are in there already. Please hear me. Preachers, hear me. Business people, hear me. You can be in Abuja for 10 years and in the spirit you are not yet there. That's why everything that is in that city does not answer to you. Why do you think there was a triumphant entry with Jesus? What was the significance? He said, blessed is he that comes. Was he not already there? Many of you who have been around northern states, when you are entering a northern state, there are usually like gates. They are not closed, but you'll be mistaken to say they are not closed. Those things are not just architectural constructions. No. A city can reject you and you will know it because you are around what should bless you and it will never bless you. Please hear me. The same way the Bible says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places and yet you are on earth here and the Bible says it's a spiritual reality. Many of you physically you are in a place of abundance but in the realm of the spirit you are in the wilderness somewhere. That's why it does not matter even if someone gives you 10 million. By that mystery of closed doors something must happen for that money to vanish. You may not be careless but what is happening? Close doors. Close doors. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.